making sure that there are no illegal stickers on the windows or windshield anywhere and also no obstructions blocking my view so you're done with all of that right there above his head on the lamp that's the air horn tell him look this is the air horn or the highway horn i gotta make sure it's working the city horn blow the other one too now i gotta check my uh, wipers and the washer fluid to make sure that it works just turn them on. When you turn them on and you get them to good work, they look. Look at the wiper. It's not dry rotted. It's not cracked. It's not broken. It's working the way that it should. Cleaning the window. If you can't spray the washer fluid, guys, don't worry about it. Just tell them, look, this is where I would also spray the washer fluid. Uh, after that, well now, earlier I checked all the exterior lights. Well, now I gotta check all the light indicators to go to those lights, you know, to make sure that they're working. So I gotta check the left turn signal indicator. Remember, this is where mostly I tend to fail. Because you say the left turn signal indicator and you turn it off and you see that it's working, but what do you forget to do? Put your finger on it. Put your finger on the light. On the light? Uh, it's flashing right there on the light. light. Left turn signal indicator. Don't go to left turn signal indicator. Left, left turn. Right there. Put your finger on that light that you see that comes on. Right turn indicator. Right there, and you put your finger on that one too. Four way flashers. Four way flashers, and you point your finger at them. The high beam indicator, the little blue light right there. A lot of y'all forget that because you're seeing it and you forget to tell them that. Don't forget to put your finger on those lights. The only other one that you that you can that you gotta talk about, but you can't see it going to be the ABS light indicator because that one when you turn the truck on it just comes on and goes away so fast that you don't see it and if it were to be on that means something is wrong so just tell them that next well you got all the gauges right there right in front of you there's four the all pressure gauge there's three things you got to tell them about each gauge one look when I turn the truck on I just got to make sure that I see the needle start rising okay and that's an indicator normally that the gauge is working just by that needle move. Second, I have to make sure that where it stops, it is showing me the correct operating pressure for the truck, for the vehicle. And third, I got to check this dashboard to make sure that there is no warning light on indicating that there is something wrong with the oil pressure or the gauge. So those three things. And then you do the water temperature and you're going to repeat the same thing. You just look. I gotta make sure the needle's rising, it's a sign that it's working. When it stops, it's showing me the correct operating temperature for the truck. And again, check for a warning light, because something might be wrong with the light. And then you do the same thing with the voltmeter. And also, uh, the only one that where it changes uh, is when you get to the air pressure gauge, because that's different. That needle doesn't just move and stay in one spot, that needle's moving around back and forth depending on how much air pressure you have in the tank. If it's low, that needle moves real slow, guys. It's not going to move really fast. It's just going to start building up pressure and it's going to be moving a little bit at a time. If it is empty, you're going to see on the left over here, and it's going to say low air. It's your warning light. It's going to be on. It should be on if you have less than 60 pounds of pressure build up. So if you turn it on and it's at 20, 30, 40, 50, all the way up to 59, that light is going to be on. But as soon as it gets to 60, that light should turn off. So that can be part of your explanation. Tell them I'll make sure that if it's below 60, the warning light is on. But as soon as it gets over 60, then I'll make sure that that light turns off. As it continues to build up, that needle, when it gets over here closer to 120 on the gauge, on the air pressure gauge, well then that's when I got to start looking uh, to listen to make sure that I hear the air coming there, which I heard a minute ago, just uh, spray that uh, exhausted air pressure out, right? So that's what you tell them. First about the warning light, and then about the uh, air governor that you do hear somewhere between 120 and 140. It doesn't necessarily have to happen that you listen to it, guys. The explanation is really what matters, okay? Because the needle might be, or the truck might already be full, you're not going to see the warning light. It might have already uh, 
our governor might have already went off while you're doing the explanation, just tell them what, what you're checking for, and that's it. Once you're done with those gauges, and it's only those four, don't worry about anything else you see in front of you. Just those four. If you look over there to the middle, you will see the heater and the defrost. So just turn it on, you know, how you normally turn your heater on. Uh, if you want it to blow right here, well, you put it on the setting for the blow in front of you. If you want the setting for your feet, you put it on the feet, right? Or the defrost. Just tell them, look, I'm checking the heater, I turn it on, and if I want it on these vents, well, I'll just turn it on and just make sure that I put my hand in front of them to feel that the hot air is blowing out. You don't have to necessarily wait for it to get hot. It's just the explanation, guys. Again, you're not trying to waste time here waiting for anything to really happen. So you do that with the heater, and then you took the defrost on, and for that one, well, hell, I gotta reach my hand up here on top to make sure that the air blows out of the vents on top of the dashboard. Just because it's something that you do quick, that's what I'm saying, you don't waste too much time on this. Yeah, I'm just giving you the explanation so you make sure you do it correctly. Now there, you just, hey, look, I'm gonna check the heater, I'm gonna put it here, I'm gonna put my hand right here, and that's it, a second or two. Now I'm gonna put on defrost, I'm gonna reach up here, it's going, and that's it. So. Once you're done with the heater and defrost, now you got the parking brakes. So, he's here for a Class B license, and I know several of y'all said y'all were here for the B. So if you're here for the B license, you have to check your parking brake. Class A, don't pay attention to this. It's for the Class B. Your parking brake, remember when you, start, you did the safe start, you pulled on the buttons to make sure that the truck parking brakes are set. So your parking brake is already on right now truck is in the intro, the parking brake is on, so you just got to tell them, look, point at it, the yellow button, look, this is the yellow, par uh, the yellow parking brake button right here, for the truck, so it's already on, what I'm going to do here, put your foot on the brake, I'm going to put it in drive, once it's in drive, I'm just going to take my foot off of the brake, the truck shouldn't move, and that parking brake is working correctly. Put it in drive, take your foot off, and you could even push on the gas a little bit, just do a little bug test. You know that you're trying to move and it's not moving. Anybody else that's here for the Class A, well, you have a parking brake for the truck and you have a parking brake for the trailer. So that means you gotta deal with both guns, the red and the yellow. If you don't mind, let's do an explanation for that. Class A. Class A, you have to push one of the buttons in at this time. It doesn't matter which one you push in. Push one in. Okay, I got, I got, the, I got the yellow one So he pushed the yellow one in. So what he's doing by pushing the yellow button in, he just took the parking brake off of the truck. The truck is free to move now. But he's leaving the red one off for the truck the trailer. So that brake has to be strong enough to stop this truck from moving. So if it's in drive, just let the brake go. Put it in drive and just see how it tried to move, but that brake stopped it. It's not letting it go anywhere. So that's the trailer parking brake. It's working. Now, you pull the yellow button out, push the red button in, and now you tell them, look, now I'm releasing the trailer, and now I'm going to check the truck to see if it works. That one is working too. Something real quick, guys. You don't waste too much time on it. Next, this is for all of you. Everybody has to check the service brake, which is the brake pedal. That's the service brake. The way you gotta check the service brake, well, you have to move the truck and you gotta push on that brake to see if it's gonna stop it or not. So for this one, tell them, look, I'm gonna check the service brake. You're here for the class of A, well, you gotta push the yellow and the red in, so you take both brakes off. If you're here for the B, you only gotta push the yellow one in, because you won't have the trailer on there. You release the brakes, put it in drive, and tell them, look, I'm gonna check the service brake. I'm gonna grab the steering wheel with two hands. I'm gonna move the truck up to five miles an hour. When I get to five miles an hour, I'm gonna push on the brake. It should stop right away and I shouldn't feel any pulling right or left on the steering wheel. If you don't have room to go five miles an hour, just barely move it and stop it right away. That's it. 
See, I pushed the brake, it's working. The service brake is working. All you gotta do, again, guys, is the explanation that matters. You said you can't feel any cooling in the Cooling, and then when you hit the brake, it should stop right there. So, at this point in time, after we've done the, the, the roll test, out and the wheel. Not a roll test, guys. Well, it's a service brake test. Service brake test. Because if you go up there, and the reason I'm trying to correct you here is because if you go up there and you tell them I'm going to do a roll test, and you do it, and it's the same thing as a service brake test, the same thing you're doing. If you call it a roll test instead of a service brake test, you're not going to get it right. So make sure you say I'm going to do the service brake test. And the parking brake test. People say call it the tug test. Not a tug test, it's a parking brake test. You gotta get the names correct if you want to get that right. At this point, you're done with those two of both of those. If you look in the middle right there, you got spare fuses, you got reflective triangles, you got a fire extinguisher, and all that is, that's all your uh, emergency equipment that's inside the vehicle that you should always carry. So tell them, look, I got this emergency equipment here. Look, I got these spare fuses. I'm supposed to have at least six of them. Show them to them. I got my reflective triangles right here in this red box. And there's three of them inside there, which I already checked. They're not cracked or broken. You look right here on the bottom also, you'll see the fire extinguisher down there. You point at it. Tell them, look, it's secured to the truck in that little box so it don't go anywhere. I have to make sure that it's fully charged. You gotta check that the pin is in place. Make sure it's up to date. And it is not damaged or leaking. It's working. And it works. So, that's your emergency equipment. At this point, this is where some of them will try to get you. Hey, and if you didn't hear it earlier, you just heard that air governor go out and say, hey, look, remember I told you about that air governor earlier? That's what it is right there, that, it, that air right there. So you can throw it in at any time, guys, where you just point it out. Back to what we were doing over there. We just called out all the emergency equipment. Like I said, some of them, they've been doing this for a while, and they know that it, they, they can try to trick you right here. And they'll ask you, hey, are you done with your interior inspection? What are you gonna say? Uh, no. Why, because what does it say at the bottom? Start the air brake test. The air brake test is part of the interior inspection. Make sure you don't leave it out. If you leave it out, that's an automatic fail. Tell them, no, I need to do the air brake test. And then you, you got everything that tells you to do right there. Look, first thing I gotta do is I gotta get out of the truck and I gotta chalk up one of my tires. You get out, they have the wheel chalks, you just gotta look for them and find them. If you wanna find them before you start your test, just keep them by the truck. The reason I don't say put them on, because if you put them on, how are you gonna be able to move the truck, you know, when you're trying to move it back and forth. So you can just keep them next to the truck somewhere where you can right now at this point, get off, grab them, put one in here, put another one over here so the truck don't roll back or forward, you know? And it can be this tire, that tire, any tire, it don't really matter. The other side of the truck if you want to. You just gotta put one on the front and the back, it don't roll one way or the other. Once you do that, you get back in the truck, and you could even leave the truck running because if it's building up air pressure, or if the AC is on and they're sitting in the truck, you don't want to turn it off. Uh, I know the video book says turn it off, put the key in your pocket, don't do that. They're, they know that you, you know that already. But they want that AC running, especially if it's really hot. So you get out, you chop the wheel, you get back in the truck. The first thing that you're supposed to do is look at the air pressure gauge. Make sure that the air pressure is built up all the way. That it has at least 120, or you could even tell them, look, I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure that uh, I wait till I hear the governor. But you don't want to wait too long just put your foot on the accelerator a little bit to speed it up or just say look it's already past 120 so i can start this air brake test however you want to do that you want to wait for the governor or just make sure it's at least at 120. me 120 is good enough so you see 120 on the gauge now you're going to do three things one turn the truck off number two Turn the key back to the on position. And then number three, without putting your foot on the brake pedal, just push the buttons in for the parking brake. 
You would only push the yellow one in for you in your case. Don't worry about it rolling. It's okay. Or just set the trailer brake back on if you want. Because you're a class B and you only gotta check the B, the yellow button anyways. You say without touching the brake pedal. Without touching the brake pedal. You see how it rolled right there? Uh -huh. The reason it's rolling is because we didn't put the wheel chops on. <laughs> Oh, that's really why over there chomp. you that's why you yeah. gotta block it up so it don't roll. Oh. When you push those brakes in, you're taking the parking brake off. So if you if it's uphill or down here, it's gonna roll one way or the other. Right, but without touching the brake pedal, you had to put in neutrals, what you said, or what you had to do? No. Because everybody tends to hold the brake down while they're gonna push. It because oh, they know that if you don't have wheel chocks, it's just something you automatically yeah. do, you know? Right. It's something that, that once you start driving you're gonna know that every time you're gonna release those you always hold the brake. Because if you're about to take off, there's no wheel chops. And if it's uphill or down, it's going to run a road just like a bit with it. You can do that, they ain't going to have no problem with you doing that. What that? Just hit the brake, even though you got no, the wheel chops. No, that's why I said chalk it and do not push the brake. Good. Because if you push the brake, you're losing air pressure. See, pump, put, pump the brakes one time. You see that? Yeah, yeah. You push it, you're losing air. So every time you push it, you lose air. That's why I said don't push it. Because you're trying to keep as much air in the system as you are right now. Because you need all that air to be able to check the system to make sure that it's working. So you're not trying to lose air pressure. So don't hold it. Just push. When he pushed in the buttons, he lost air pressure right there. It's not at 120 anymore. It's probably been what? Maybe 190 something? See how it's not at 120 anymore? And that's okay because they understand that when you push those buttons in, you're going to lose air pressure. But you started at 120. It's at 104, and then you push the brake too, and it might get it under 100. And before you know it, you don't have enough to finish the air to finish this test. So push the buns in, don't hold the brake pedal. That's why you got to get off and chop the wheel so it don't roll anywhere on you. As soon as you do that, tell them, okay, look, my truck is ready for me to start the air brake test. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the service brake pedal down for one minute. Or just set the brake pedal down for one minute because what I'm going to do is check to make sure that I don't have any leaks. If you're here for a Class B license, where on that piece of paper where it says the number four, scratch it out and put a number three. You have to make sure that while you're holding that brake pedal down for one minute, you don't lose more than three pounds of pressure. Make sure you tell them while on the air pressure gauge. Because some of y'all will just say, I'm just gonna make sure I don't lose more than three pounds of pressure on the gauge. And they can get you for technical right there. Well, he said to say the gauge. He didn't say the air pressure gauge. They can fail you right there just simply for not saying the air pressure gauge. Uh, just make sure you tell them that. So you hold it down. You'll see that the needle will move one more time. He said 104. Maybe it's at 100 or 101 right now. Because when he pushed it, remember he lost some more air pressure right there. But he's holding it for a whole minute right here. And you just gotta be looking at the time. You can bring a watch, you can bring your cell phone, uh, stopwatch if you want. Just something to time it for one minute. And you're just looking at the time and you're looking at the air pressure gauge. Time, air pressure gauge. The class B has to say three pounds. But anybody that's here for a class A, you need to tell them you should not lose more than four pounds. So that's the difference between the two, three and four. All right, let's just say it's been a minute. Take your foot off of it. Okay? This is where you look at the gauge and you tell them, hey, look, I was checking. As you can see, I held it down for one minute. I don't have any leaks because I didn't lose more than three pounds or I didn't lose more than four pounds uh, of air pressure while looking at this air pressure. And that's it you're done with step one step two says that you have to make sure that you check that the low air signal light comes on or the low air uh, alarm light comes on any one of those is fine just make sure you throw in there low air okay low air alarm or low air light or low air signal light something that says low air and that light should come on before the needle reaches 60 pounds of pressure so you start pumping it down. There it is. Now it came on at 60 pounds. So it's working, right? Mm -hmm. so you just start, that's all you have.
have to do, remember, you have about 100 pounds of air pressure, so you got to get all that air out. That's why you're pumping it, to get the air out, to make sure that that light comes on before it gets to 60. So it's working. Tell them. So that's it. That's checked out. That's good. Now, the last thing I need to do is I got to check the emergency brakes or the spring brakes. And the way that I check those is by continuing to pump on the brake pedal. Hold on, let me, let me give them the whole explanation because if you don't do it, you just do it. And there you go again, see? You're doing it, but you're not telling them what you're doing, you fail. The explanation is what's important, not, not the physical part, okay? I mean, that's important too, but you gotta make sure you let them know what it is you're doing first. So, I'm gonna pump on it to make sure that the emergency brakes are working. What should happen here is that I'm gonna be looking at the, the parking brake buttons they should pop out by themselves somewhere in between 20 and 45 pounds of pressure. So now that you give them the explanation, now pump it all you want and make sure that it happens. piece of paper as you can see it's just three steps one where you have to uh, hold it for a minute two where you got to pump it for the morning light to come on and three to make sure that the emergency brakes are working by themselves where the buns pop out by themselves as you're pumping so at this point if you pick the card B and you just did everything that we just did you're done they'll ask you okay are you done now yeah I'm done I did everything I'm supposed to do I checked the lights, I did the engine start, I just did the interior inspection. That's it. Once you say you're done, guys, in there, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. At this point, you're going to see that they're going to start grading your paper, your test. And it might take them a few minutes. And while you're sitting there, you can turn the truck back on. You're not being graded at all. But you can go ahead and turn it off for the AC to start blowing on them. Not only that, uh, to start building up the air pressure on the truck again get out all the air out of it and you can even get out and remove the wheel chocks you're already done right now you're just doing this just to do it you know, just, to get the, just, just to get it ready you know just in case you are gonna you pass it you're gonna move on to the next you know you won't be wasting too much time there they'll let you know here okay you pass move on to the next day or hey i'm sorry you failed uh, schedule another appointment so you can come try it again they will let you know right here that was far the beat. Go ahead and shut it off. Go ahead and pull that key out and turn the lights off. That's what's keeping the alarm on. So car B, see how we only did that section? But that was actually a whole test right there. Because you that's the card you pick. Let's say one A on here picks the card C. This is only for the class A. You know what? Let me do the A. So anybody doing the class B can get out here once I'm done with the A. And then we'll do the C for the, the last one. So if one A on here picks card A, your instructions are going to be, look, you got card A out.